Welcome back to 10 Minute IO, everyone. We're going to be talking about HR data analytics today. Uh, before we begin, thank you, AJ, for your suggestion on using the uh, the pop filter. I have a makeshift pop filter here. Hopefully, this sounds better. Uh, I broke up the this session into two sessions because it's a even though it's a very basic, uh, high level overview of HR data analytics still required two separate parts. The first part, we'll be talking about what is data analytics, and then second part, we'll go through an example. So in terms of what is data analytics uh, for HR, we can look at this as consisting of three components. We have the data, we have the analysis, and decisions that we make, or recommendations that we can make uh, after we go through the analysis. Taking a look at the data we have, when you think about HR, HR naturally gathers all kinds of data on uh, employees. So we have turnover data, typically higher ratio, uh, performance data, performance evaluation, absenteeism, uh, attitude in terms of employee engagement, and so on. There's a ton of data that's available. What you can do with that uh, data is to use that data and with some additional information and a few uh, analysis techniques, you can analyze that data. I have some um, examples of analysis here, some correlations, which is most commonly used and very simple to do. And I'll walk through how you can do correlations using Microsoft Excel in uh, later sessions. But there are other uh, types of analytics that you can find um, on YouTube easily. Uh, ANOVA, regression is a common analysis, chi-square, modeling, some modeling procedures. Uh, there, those are some more advanced techniques where you can get into uh, much more sophisticated uh, types of predictions. Um, but once you analyze the data, the goal uh, ultimately is to make decisions or recommendations. And you can use the data and the analysis results to make recommendations, recommendations on your staffing strategy, uh, your recruitment selection strategy, training strategy. Uh, compensation, bonuses, and succession plan, uh, and many others uh, related to, again, human resources. So why does HR analytics matter? This is a quick overview uh, or results of a study from Aberdeen Group back in 2009. And this is uh, over, this consists of 233 firms over a four year period, um, or I should say, year-over-year uh, year, uh, impact from those companies that use analytics uh, in dark blue and those companies not using analytics in light blue. And you can see that on these three areas, employee performance, profit per full-time employee, and revenue per full-time employee, you can clearly see that the companies that are using analytics um, are performing at a far greater rate. Uh, 11 plus 11 percent for employee performance, 4 percent uh, on the positive side for profit, and revenue again 4 percent. So, um, although this is just a single study, uh, it does provide some compelling evidence for using analytics. And this makes sense if you think about if you're an athlete and you are trying to improve your performance on your event, um, then anything you can measure. To, uh, in order to improve on those metrics, you will eventually, uh, or that measurement and the striving towards improving on that measurement, uh, naturally will lead to higher performance overall in the long run. And that's the basic idea with HR analytics. The idea is we can use HR data through some simple analysis. You can uh, arrive at uh, conclusions and, of course, recommendations that goes beyond just gut feeling. Uh, and when you base it on data, it's much more likely to be uh, predictive uh, and have um, overall utility uh, when you make your intervention decisions. So what kinds of metrics are we talking about here? This is just a quick overview of different types of metrics you can collect. You have the rate. Uh, in the way of percentage. Uh, so some examples on the right hand column, there turnover rate, new higher percentage of high, high, uh, high performers. You have the ratio or fraction. You can take the number of people who are promoted divided by the number of uh, total employees within a work group. That gives you uh, some sort of a ratio. Composition, 
uh, is simply breaking down uh, a group into meaningful subgroups. So you can have termination reasons, uh, you know, voluntary versus involuntary, tenure distribution. Index is basically standardized using a standardized scale. Uh, it could be a, a scale going from 1 to 5, 1 to 10, 1 to 100, uh, and so on. Uh, engagement index is one common index that um, companies use to gauge the overall engagement of their workforce. Qualitative input simply is talking about capturing uh, open-ended comments data, and that's usually done through uh, employee engagement surveys, exit interviews, and so on. So let's go through some examples. I start with the recruitment data and some sample metrics here. I'm not going to go through each one of these. You can feel free to pause the video if you like to read um, in detail each one of these. But I'll go through the first couple, two or three. Attraction metrics uh, has to do with how, uh, you know, when a company puts out a job ad, how appealing is that? How attractive is that to potential candidates? And you can capture that by looking at the number of applicants uh, that submit their resumes in a given period. Hiring cycle time, and this is an important metric that uh, HR people pay attention to, especially recruiting, in recruiting. Uh, and this tells you how quickly, how efficient are you in, uh, you know, placing candidates in a bit, in an open position. This is important because it costs money uh, when positions are open for a long period of time. It does cost money and it does affect productivity of overall organization. Cost per hire, again, relates to efficiency of your recruiting and placement method. Uh, and it tells you the total amount of dollars spent on recruiting, hiring, onboarding, uh, divided by the total number of new hires. You don't want to spend too much money on uh, finding, recruiting, and onboarding new candidates. Uh, and you can read through the rest here. I provide here just as an example. You can see that this just a, by the way, this is just scratching the surface in terms of recruit, recruitment data. But it's a great start. In terms of turnover retention, uh, total turnover, and that's basically number of turnover in a 12 month period, which is typical time period, divided by the average number of full time employees uh, over that period. Total uh, turnover cost, how much is the uh, turnover costing the company in terms of uh, the person being, you know, um, or that position being open, uh, the cost of replacement and training uh, to get someone in that position, uh, and making a distinction between voluntary versus involuntary turnover on the third and fourth rows of that. Uh, you can see that that's an important metric because there is a clear difference between people who leave voluntarily versus people who are fired. Workforce development, we have time to promotion, engagement index, net promoter score. Uh, time to promotion is the number of months till promotion for a new candidate or new employee. Enga employee engagement index has to do with uh, overall positive feelings on behalf of the, uh, the employees about the organization. And this is an important metric because it's been shown to uh, be related to productivity, uh, related to uh, low turnover, customer satisfaction, uh, many positive outcomes in organizations. Net Promoter Score, or NPS, is a rough gauge for employee satisfaction. It's basically asking employees, how likely or how willing are you to recommend our company to your family or friend? Last one is operations. This is important because it tells HR how efficient the HR department is running. So we have revenue per employee. And that's simple calculation. Total revenue for the company divided by the total number of full-time employees. Profit per employee, uh, very similar, but you're just taking the, instead of revenue, you're taking the profit divided by the total number of full-time employees. And it tells you just roughly, obviously, depending on the company, uh, it will vary dramatically, but uh, roughly, it's a rough gauge of estimated profitability per employee. Cost per HR employee, total HR cost divided by the number of HR employees. Again, this is getting at efficiency and effectiveness of HR departments. Uh, with that, I would greatly appreciate if you share the link with others uh, who may find this useful. And uh, if you have topic suggestions, please feel free to email me. Coming up next is HR Data Analytics Part 2, and we'll cover how we can use that data and convert into suggestions.
Thank you.